Today, I'll share the top five commanders in Rise of Kingdoms, and I'll even give you the very best talent builds so you can make sure you're getting the most value possible out of your legendary commander investments. Stick around for the things you need to know about those top five, and even a few that... Hey, they'll make the honorable mention list, but at least you'll know where they stand. Now, before I begin, I've got to thank the spawn. Now, the reason I can make today's video and be very confident about my recommendations for which commanders are the very best and, well, which ones aren't going to hold up is because I play extensively with the overwhelming majority of the commanders in the game maxed. And the reason I can do that is from very generous sponsors like the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by the Amazon App Store. That's right, Amazon, baby. And they've got a crazy deal on a city building war game that you might really enjoy. It's called Ebony the King's Return. And this game is actually ranked higher in the App Store than Rise of Kingdoms and Call of Dragons on a pretty regular basis. So if you wanna check out this game and get some crazy discounts on the bundles that you can buy in the game, use my link in the description. It's going to take you to this discount page. From there, you're going to scroll on down. It'll tell you about the discount. And in order to redeem it, you'll use my QR code all the way on the left to download the Amazon App Store. I have done this on my channel for other games that I've played. This is legit. From there, you download Ebony the King's Return. Now that you've downloaded it from the Amazon App Store, you can go purchase and use special Amazon coins. And this is where you get crazy discounts on the purchases that you make. In fact, if you get a look over here, you can see there is an additional discount for a short window of time. Purchase any item in Ebony to receive Amazon coins uh, back. The more you spend, the more you get. And the details are here on the screen. All right. Now I have personally used Amazon coins in multiple games and it is a freaking bonkers amount of discounts that you can go and get. So a big thank you to the Amazon app store for sponsoring today's video. Check that link in the description to download and good luck in your journey in Ebony, the King's return. All right, my friends, let's get to work. Let's talk about the best commanders in rise of kingdoms. And I want to start with a few honorable mentions and and some of these honorable mentions may surprise you, but we're going to kick it off with some cavalry. And these cavalry commanders are very good, but they don't quite make my top five. The first one that's not in my top five is Joan Prime. Joan Prime is a very powerful commander, 2,000 damage, hits three targets, buffs your rage, buffs your damage um, of your march and two other nearby allied units it says three but that includes her unit and it will always prioritize hitting herself and she can fire the active skill all over again which is just insane but not insane enough to make our top list also not on our top five list is huo and this is weird because i mean obviously there's a cavalry commander on our top list and the cavalry commander that's going to be in the top five is older than huo it is weird that they are both single target damage and that Hua was doing 2,700 damage factor when they're the primary, but he's not the best one. And I think the reason is because of his very nuanced expertise skill. Uh, basically, if you unlock his expertise skill, when you defeat a unit, it drops all your rage and it gives you some buffs for having done that. But the fact that it's controversial as to whether or not you should expertise this commander really tells you a lot about the weirdness of the commander like there should be no question as to whether or not maxing out the commander is better it should just be better and on the topic of commanders that maybe get an honorable mention i don't know if sargon necessarily even should be on the honorable mention but certainly on the topic of commanders that uh you question whether or not you should expertise them sargon is one of those commanders now the reason is that he is applying a debuff. That debuff is very powerful. It's called Odd. It is making it so that the target will take an upwards of 30% more skill damage, but he's going to clear that debuff off and do a bunch of damage when you have him. Uh, not only, it's not actually maxed out, it's unlocking the fourth skill. Okay, so, so there's actually a question as to whether or not you should run this commander 5550 or start to put more skills into him, which is really weird. And pretty much every time there's that dynamic in the game, I feel like that commander is not as good as they could have been. <laughs> so this commander is, we'll put him on the honorable mention list, but it seems like, weirdly enough, there's going to be older commanders better than the newer commanders, which is actually, in my opinion, a cool thing for the game. However, let's keep moving to a few honorable mentions here. We can cover some Archer honorable mentions. 
And the Archer honorable mention is going to be Boudicca Prime. And Boudicca Prime is so controversial. She's controversial not because she does low damage. Her damage is good. And the debuff is good. They take 35% more skill damage and lose March speed. The problem is that she's kind of tanky and most archers are about, just about blasty area of effect damage. And she's not doing that. She can be a secondary or a primary in a combo that is going to do that, but you need someone to pair with her that is going to just do a ton of damage. She is very defensive, as I mentioned, and she'll get even more defensive when you get lower, and she's got a little bit of healing, okay? But she is sort of an enabling commander more than a big damage commander, and I'm pretty sure every commander in our top five here is just going to do big damage. Another archer that we can throw onto this list of honorable mentions is like, man, they're they're up there, they're powerful, but they're like not quite powerful enough, is a commander that I have yet to max, although I probably will for my next KVK, and that is Asher Benipal. Asher Benipal does some nice area of effect damage and even hammers his primary target even more. And the coolness here is that after you use a active skill, you get a buff. Once you have him expertised, of course. He is basically Nebu 2.0, and Nebu 1.0 still sees a lot of use. So yeah, Asher Benipal is really powerful. A little bit of a downside here that some of your bonuses only apply when you are outside of your territory, and also some of your bonuses only really work when you're running a rally, which... This is really about the open field when I say top five commanders in the game. So that's not what this list is about, Rally and Garrison. This is purely from a field perspective, who is the best. And this brings us to our actual top five. Who actually belongs in the top five list here? And I'm going to start with an oldie but goodie, but Nevsky, man, number five on my list for top five commanders in the game. And I just... I'm shocked that he sees so much relevance still. But when we look at his kit, it's like, right, he was super, super busted. He, for those that are newer to the game, was the first commander to jump up the power level of legendary commanders by like two or three tiers. He came in like January, the same year that we got the boat combat game mode. I can't think of the name right now. Drop a comment with it. But the point is 2,300 damage factor and a nice defense reduction if a target is being surrounded, is really good. He's also got attack, march speed, and health. He's also reducing damage taken and elevating damage dealt, depending on being surrounded, which is amazing. He's also enhancing skill damage. He's kind of like a single target damage E-Song. Like, he is just super, super big damage. And for that reason, he is on the list as a staple. Top five in the game. Weirdly enough, I cannot believe this far in, he's still there. In terms of talents, it is extremely un uncontroversial that this is the build that you use. For cavalry, almost every single skill cav combo of commander uses this talent tree right here. You go all the way to get max rage restoration from feral nature. Uh, you've got a powerful active skill, so using it more frequently is just good. And then you get skill damage taken reduction rather than the disarm debuff, which would reduce the attack of the enemy. And then you get undying fury for extra rage. Now from here, we get a look at number four on the list. And by the way, maybe you want to pause the video and talk about uh, or take a guess as to which ones you think are going to be up at the top. But Skippy Prime, man. This dude, number four on my list, has been so good for so long. And like I said, both Nevsky and here's Skippy Prime are a, like generation old compared to the newest cavalry and the newest infantry that we've got in the game. So it's kind of wild that like these commanders push the power at a level that was so high that the, the developers were like, maybe we don't push power so much next time. So what is Skippy doing? Well, 2,000 damage factor is not amazing these days, which is insane that I'm saying that out loud, but it hits three targets, and that's why it's good. It's AoE. And those targets lose 30% health. And also, every skill on this commander is for the open field. And it is a ton of stats. 40% attack, 25% march speed. Some of that's based on your being outside of territory. When you're fighting other troops, you're gaining health, so he's not as good for swarming garrisons. You've got a chance to do a damage over time effect, and that is an instant proc, so it can like trigger from a normal attack, which is amazing. 
So you might just like get into a combat, hit someone with damage over time. So good. And you also have this ability that makes it so you can reduce your skill damage taken and throw out shields. You shield yourself and two nearby marches and buffs always prioritize your own marches first, which is huge. So you can just get hit with random low skill damage and shield yourself and two other marches. Busted. Now, what's crazy is that he's still busted, even though a lot of people don't even pair him with Guan, and Guan is what gives a silence. So, so Guan with Skippy was the combo for a very long time. Nowadays, I mean, Skippy with Liu Che is insane. Skippy with even Honda Tadakatsu or Mehmed does great. Skippy with Alex is great, and none of those are doing silences. So if another commander comes out with silences, I mean, people are still using Guan. So like, your current target might be silenced in a big fight, but the point that I'm trying to make is that he's very good, even without the expertise doing very much. For the most part, you're just getting the 10% extra skill damage benefit. Now, the really crazy part about this is that if we're saying the expertise skill isn't all that important, that means you don't even have to max this commander to get a ton of value. Think about that. Like, you could take this commander to 5551 and get a ton of value. I'm not saying necessarily that you, for your account, should do that, but... If you're newer to the game, Skippy, top four in my list, I'm putting him at number four, and also you don't even have to max him to get the overwhelming majority of the value. In fact, this last skill, if you put one point into this, you don't get all the damage reduction value. You get 10% instead of 30% uh, skill damage taken reduction, but you get half the shield value, which is, like, that's really good, okay? You're 50% you're, you're of the way to the max amount of shield you're going to get here. So that's one point. Just unlocking it gets you that. Very, very powerful commander. Talent-wise, I think it's pretty uncontroversial that this is the build. You're trying to reduce the skill damage you take, so you are eventually going to go to emergency protection, but you're going to start with two points in a rejuvenate. Now, I've covered this extensively, but for those of you newer to the game, there's a limit to the amount of rage you can generate per turn. Chances are that if you put three points into this, you will exceed the amount of rage you can generate per turn, and there's literally no value in going over that 220 secret rage limit that's listed, as far as I know, nowhere in game, but that's a detailed topic for another video. From there, I, of course, really like March Speed, and some people may say, like, wait, but why didn't you go for Elite Soldiers? Well, elite soldiers for each talent point gives you half a percent of attack, defense, and health. So it's one and a half percent of stats, and it's split evenly across attack, defense, and health per point you put in here. But strong a body is two percent of stats, and it's health, all of it. Health is not only a better stat, but you're getting more stats per point deployed. So this is the way you want to run your build, spreading out uh, across getting some extra march speed, going and getting hold the line for a full infantry march, which is what you want to do here. This is a great build, and of course you reduce that skill damage taken, which stacks very nicely with Skippy's fourth skill, all right? This brings us to number three on the list, the top three. If you're getting value from this video, consider smashing that subscribe button and throwing a like on the video, or even dropping a comment, and I really appreciate your support. But the number three commander here is an archer commander, and it is Herman Prime. And Herman Prime is arguably the most important commander in the game. At an individual power level, I don't think he is there compared to the other two commanders we're going to get a look at. But in terms of what he does for the open field, the kingdom that brings more Herman Primes is just going to win. So maybe I should put him number one, actually. But I, I, look, we'll show you these other commanders and you'll be like, oh yeah, those commanders are very good. But Herman Prime has an active skill, it hits three enemies, 2,000 damage factor. Well, that, that's a lot like Skippy Prime, isn't it? Very similar. But when he hits those targets, he's going to give them poison stacks. Each stack of poison is going to make them take 3% more skill damage. That can stack up to 15 stacks, which means those targets are taking 45% more skill damage. Look, it is a skill damage meta in Rise of Kingdoms, and there are commanders that don't do that, weirdly enough, but it's still an overall skill damage meta right now, which means that making targets in the open field take more skill damage is nuts. Now, of course, the rest of Herman Prime's kit is insane. He's got a ton of stats. He's got uh, boosted AoE skill damage. He reduces the damage he takes against targets that are poisoned. He's got instant proc AoE poisons. He uses his skill all over again when you have deployed a bunch of poison stacks. The dude freaking slaps, all right? Now, he's got the Archer Versatility Support Tree. 
And if you're using Herman Prime as the primary, which is right now, in my opinion, not the meta, there's a better commander. We'll talk about that. But if you're going to use Herman Prime as the primary, there is a very simple build that you can go and use. I've got that mapped out right here. The first thing you're going to take is Rejuvenate. We already talked about why you put two points in here, not three. From there, you go to the top of the Archer Tree, getting Whistling Arrows. And then from there, you double back and get Emergency Protection. Very, uncontro uh, very uncontroversial build here. Very powerful build. And this commander does, I think, very well when he's the primary, but you can do better if you're using someone else as the primary. Now, we'll get to that commander in just a second, but the number two commander on my list is going to be Liu Che. Liu Che is, I think, better than people expected in many situations. And why is that? So he is a smite commander and there are very few of these in the game at all really like two although we have other normal attackers a smite commander is going to do skill damage but it's based off of your normal attack damage enhancement so this does it's skill damage that, that does not get enhanced by other skill damage that's both skill damage debuffs it also cir circumvents entirely skill damage taken reduction but is influenced by normal attack damage taken reduction. It's very weird the way smite damage works. So they've basically made it so that normal attack enhancers are very good <laughs> for uh, Liu Che because he will do skill damage, but it doesn't count as skill damage. It's, it's, it's in the game and it's 2,250 skill damage hitting, th uh, oh, up to five enemy targets cheap. I was going to say three. I can't believe this. It's five. It's so busted. And the main target, I believe. I think it's only the main target. It says troops hit by this skill. Is it everybody losing 40% march speed? God, this commander is so busted. Um, he's also got great stats. 20% defense. Nice march speed. Good skill damage taken reduction. You need to be full infantry. Fine. Who cares? He's got instant proc damage as well. And it's instant proc smite damage. All right. And also, he's going to make it so you do more normal attack damage. And whenever you deal smite damage, the target deals 10% less damage for the next three seconds. So he's even got a debuff, y'all. That is crazy. And on top of that, he has the chance 25% when expertised to do an extra basic attack, which is kind of like instant proc damage. It just won't show up as a red number. Your, your white damage number that you deal is just going to go up. And that can trigger all over again other forms of instant proc damage and buffs that trigger when you launch a basic attack. This commander is insane. The only thing that would make him better, in my opinion, is if he had, I think, a better debuff. Because I think you can do better, and we'll talk about what that is in a minute. March speed is cool, but I wouldn't say that like make, makes or breaks a fight necessarily. Liu Che is so good, he's revived old commanders like Alexander the Great to a very high level of relevance, although he is very good with a commander like Gorgo, and many people think you should use Gorgo as the primary, but my uh, understanding, and based off of testing that my friend Cortex, who you've probably seen on the channel many times in the past, he went and did a ton of testing and found that Liu Che as the primary works out better, and the way that he tested that was with five-on-five -five duels, but whether or not you believe me on Liu Che being the primary, look, it's what I do. You can do what you want to do. And when I use him, this is the infantry build that I use. Now, he's got the attack tree, which we haven't actually looked at an attack tree in this video, but the attack tree has several talents that are busted. The first is fight to the death. This is insane. If you're playing well, this is going to give you huge advantage. You deal 6% more damage, but also take 3% more damage. In addition... It should be feel very obvious to get Martial Mastery. This commander's troop deals 6% more normal damage of all types, but also deals 3% less skill damage. Well, you don't deal skill damage. So, GG. Get Martial Mastery. Effortless is the most debatable talent here. It gives you a damage boost. The longer you're in combat, the more damage boost you get. If you are not confident about it, just get it last. But I will point out that you get some March Speed on the way. And March Speed is pretty nice. March Speed's right over here. So the other place you're going to get March Speed is in the Infantry Tree. We already talked about this tree and why you'd build it like this. We did that in conjunction with a Support Tree on Skippy. But this is the build I would recommend strongly on your Liu Chat, which brings us to the number one commander in the game, in 
my opinion, and that is Zuge Leong. And the reason I rank Zuge Leong as the number one commander in the game, even though he's still a generation older than the newest archers, remember Herman Prime came out more recently, Zuge Leong does a couple things. First of all, he's hitting five enemies with damage, and it's circle AoE, and it's 2,000 damage factor. I'm sorry, but circle AoE is busted, man. It is so powerful. There are so many times where you're hitting more targets because it is circle AoE. And on top of that, troops hit by this skill deal 15% less damage for three seconds. That effect is nuts. On top of that, he's giving health to archers, bro. Archers are very much needed a commander that could give them health and here it is he's also boosting your all damage and whenever you're hit with an effect he has a chance to negate the control effect silence disarm heal immune okay and then deal damage to the commander that did that to him that is bonkers in big fights he also makes it so you deal more skill damage. Whenever you do basic attacks, you have a chance to enhance your attack, kind of like Esong. In addition, he's got this marquee effect. And I feel like a lot of people have just kind of forgotten what these commanders do. It's been so long that they look at them. But whenever your commander uses an active skill, if you do not have marquee, then you gain the marquee effect, which increases your damage dealt, which is really cool. And if their troop already has marquee and it contains only archers, you get rid of the marquee effect and do 1500 damage factor to three nearby enemies. Now that damage is not affected by skill damage buffs. Bit of a bummer, but this commander is really cracked. And when you expertise him, you will enter combat with that marquee effect. So 10% all damage. And whenever they deal skill damage with the um, active skill, or I believe this is uh, the, the fourth skill over here. Yep. Um, your troop gets rage. <laughs> I mean, look, this commander does a lot. It's very powerful. You could debate whether or not uh, you would think that Liu Che or Zuge Leong is your number one. I'm going to put him at number one, and I'm, I'm very, very happy with this investment. In terms of talents, this is the build I think you should use. I, again, would say this is pretty uncontroversial as being the best build for the open field. You go all the way to Feral Nature, you double back and you get Venomous Sting and also Razor Sharp. You get a few extra points to play within the Archer Tree. There is an alternate build here, which looks like this. Depending on your philosophy, if you think you can get more by virtue of an opponent that's not necessarily running away from you, or if you're swarming a lot of garrisons with him, I guess, you could go with this build instead. I will make the argument, however, that because you're going to pair with Herman Prime, you want to use your active skills as frequently as possible and this is probably the better way to go. Now, a big part of what makes Rise of Kingdoms fun is that there's so dang many commanders that you can go and collect, and you can mix and match them in some pretty exciting ways. Some of them end up being total duds, which is kind of a bummer, like Moctezuma and Solomon. but overall, I'm pretty happy with where the meta's at right now, and I'm definitely looking forward to when we get some new cavalry soon. So if you don't want to miss out on updated lists, and by the way, I release a tier list every single month for the best places to invest your legendary commander sculptures. I'll probably do one of those a little bit later this month. But again, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on those vids. I think you'll find them very helpful. It'll let you know, hey, like, don't invest in these commanders and like, do invest in these commanders, you know? And the difference here for a collection with the right commanders versus the wrong commanders is pretty dang stark. And please do check out the sponsor of today's video. That is the Amazon App Store. Big thank you to them for sponsoring the vid. It's very generous sponsors that make it so that I can be a full-time content creator, which I deeply appreciate. And when you check out my sponsors, it supports me. So thank you for checking out the Amazon App Store, where it is absolutely crazy how much money you can save in a lot of city building war games. Some of them you may be already playing, but definitely check out Evany um, for the latest offer, which looks really nuts. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.